Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My brothers and my sisters, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Cash, we welcome you to Eastman Zion Evangelism Hour. We welcome you. We are so happy that you join us today. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We must all rejoice and be glad. As we prepare to come before you, Mr. Williams, we come and pray to the Lord from her heart. She's the servant of the Lord. For many years, she have labored in the vineyard of the Lord. She will come in her way. And after that, Sister Oliver will come to read the scripture for today. Then we will journey through the word of God as the Lord will lead me to share with you. Sister William is coming at this time. Amen. Good morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I come now, we come now to give thee praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to pray. We thank you, Lord God, for a place to pray. We thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. Lord, we say thank you. It's a day that we have never seen. And Lord, as it passes through, we will never see it again. So Lord, we thank you for the past. We thank you for the present. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the future because we know the future is in you, Lord, and we say thank you. We thank you right now for the presence, for your presence that lives within us, Lord, that provides everything for us. And, Lord, we say thank you. We praise your holy name. And, Lord, as we take this journey through these 24 hours, we can do nothing but depend on you. Let our hearts be filled, Lord, with thanksgiving of your goodness, your mercy, and, Lord, your compassion that you give us because you allowed us, Lord, to wake up to this brand new day. And we say thank you. Lord, you allowed us to wake up in our right minds. Lord, we say thank you. And oh, Lord, let this day be not for form nor fashion. Let it be for no outside show to this unfriendly world. Let it be, Lord, that our lights will shine. And men, women, boys, and girls will see our lights and come running saying, what's the light for? And we can say we have a living Savior who gives to us, who, Lord, that fills our heart with joy, even through the sad moments of our life. I come praying now, Lord, for the sad moments in all our lives. Lord, because I pray now for the widows, the men, the women, 
children that do not have parents anymore. Lord God, I come asking that you will let your compassion run through our heart. Oh, Lord, for the loss of our loved ones. And Lord, when they're not lost, because if their hearts are filled with the Spirit, we know they're with you, and we can say thank you. Lord, we can praise your name. I thank you, Lord, for my spouse that was with me, that he knew you, Lord, and he could come and he could praise and he could say thank you. Oh, Lord, and I thank you for that life that I had and we shared. Oh, Lord, I pray right now for each one of us who have done this. I pray, Lord, for Sister Bowie, who was with us for all those years with her husband. And, and Lord, let her light shine, my Father, that we can say thank you, Lord, for that couple that gave us an example on how to live as husband and wives. We say thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. And, oh, Lord God, you are a great God. We ask, Lord God, that you will help all the sick and the afflicted all over this world, Lord. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge to know that they must call on you. And, Lord God, they will give, put joy in their hearts, Lord. We'll put joy in their hearts because you are God that can. And, Lord, and we know that you can. We know, Lord, you give us sadness. But, oh, Lord, the next day you give us joy. And, Lord, we can say thank you. Praise your holy name. We pray right now, Lord God, for East Mount Zion. The leader you placed here and the one you placed by his side, Father God, that they can carry on as a couple. And we just thank you. We love you. Thank you for this evangelistic hour, Father God, that we can be taught on how to go out and tell somebody that we know a Savior. Lord, because in your word you say, come, come. And, oh, Lord, we can go out and we can say we have a Savior that rules heaven and earth. We ask right now, Lord, that you forgive us for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for us being a forgiving God, that you gave your only begotten son. You said whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You gave us your word, and you said the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, and we can wear the words in our hearts that we might not sin against you. And, Lord, we say thank you. Fill our hearts, Lord. Fill our hearts. We ask right now, right now, that we will learn. And when we leave here, oh, Lord God, we will be filled up, filled up with your goodness, filled up with your mercy, filled up, Lord, to say thank you, praise your name. Oh, Lord, it is in the name of Jesus that we can create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God said amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. scripture for today is coming from St. Luke, Luke chapter 13, 16 through 21. And he spake parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. Yes, Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. 
and he talked within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestore my fruit. And he said, This will I do. I will tear down my barns and be a greater, and there I will be all my fruit I give. And I will say to my soul, Thou have much good laid upon for many years. Take thine eat, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this might thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth upon a treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? will happen to you in a minute from now. Do you know what will happen in your life? Few seconds from now. As a matter of fact, do you know what will happen to you tomorrow? From all indication, the answer to that question is no. We do not know what will happen in our life seconds from now. Neither do we know what will happen an hour from now. We, 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 we don't know. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. In our life, in the life of people around us, we do not know what will happen in America tomorrow. We do not know what will happen in the world around us tomorrow. Nobody knows. But I come to tell you, I know who knows. The one who made it. He made everything. In the beginning, there was nothing. God made everything. He said, let us make man. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He knows what will happen tomorrow. Jesus told us about a rich man in the book of Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. He told us about a rich man, a man that, that, that has so many stuff. He got a lot of things. His house is full of things. His vineyard is full of things. And he got no place to store more. Because he's still getting more stuff. But he got no place to put it. The storage is full. 
And he, he said to himself, <laughs> isn't that something? He said to himself, that's what we do. I got all these goods and I got more coming. What am I going to do? He doesn't know. That's the question he asks himself. What am I going to do with all these things that I got? He said, oh, I will destroy my storage that I have now. Then I will build another storage so I can store all my goods. Then I will sit back and say, oh, look at all that I got. And I will smile and eat and drink and, and be merry. That's what we think. We think for today. Drink, eat, and enjoy ourselves. Oh, really? Be careful now. You see, in our computer, if you have computer, you know, there come a time at the beginning, the computer, when you set it on, everything comes bam. You can navigate and do anything you want so fast. But as time goes on, the computer is slow. Things don't work as it used to work before. Because there is a lot of junk in the computer. I don't know if you hear me. In your cell phone, in your computer, at the beginning, it all looks good. You have so much to enjoy from using the computer. You have so much to enjoy by using your cell phone. But as the time goes on, it accumulates so much junk. And all of a sudden, it slow down. And you cannot do anything about it until you take it to someone who knows what to do. And then they will reprogram it. In other words, they will change it. I come to tell you today, you and I have accumulated so much junk in our life. So much junk in our mind. So much junk in our thoughts. Everything is boring down upon us. And we are wondering, what must I do? Because we do not know. We have no peace. We can't sleep at night. We got so much junk in us. I come to share with you. Because we don't know tomorrow. Clean up that junk. The story says that this man destroyed the old barn, destroyed the storage to build a new one. You and I, yes, I'm talking to you. We need to destroy the junk in our life in order to allow Christ to come in. You and I need to destroy the junk in our life. Build a new relationship with Christ Jesus himself. And he will put a smile on your face. You'll be able to walk around knowing that all power is in his hand. But watch this. In this story, Jesus told us that the rich man built this new so-called storage. But God said to him, you foolish fool, tonight, not tomorrow, tonight, I need your soul because I gave you that life. Then who will enjoy all the things you have accumulated? You and I don't know tomorrow. We, we don't know what will happen the next moment. Jesus is calling you and I. Destroy the old self. Build a new life through Jesus Christ. Receive him into your life so you will be rich in the things of God. I don't know if you hear me. 
You and I have so much junk in our computer, in our cell phones. They are not working right no more. The same thing with our mind, our spirit. The same thing with our body. We so junked down, weighed down, worried every day. We can't sleep at night because of the accumulations that we have put upon ourselves. But, but, but we have the power in the name of Jesus to let go and build a new storage with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You, you, you have that opportunity today. You have that opportunity to build a new life. Rich in God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You don't know. Not too long ago, I saw a funeral in Washington. I watched the funeral. In Washington. Guess who it was? General Colin Powell. General Colin Powell. A general. He's gone home. The same thing applies to you and I. No matter how rich and how powerful. We must go through that pathway. You don't know what will happen to you. Seek Christ now before it's too late. Because when we live here, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you accept him as your Savior who died for you and confess your sins to him, when your time comes, which you do not know, you'll be with him. But if you do not accept him as your savior, when your time comes, surely you're going to hell. I know what I'm saying may be difficult to understand, but it is real. Don't be carried away with this world. The devil is running around. Pretending to be what he's not. He wants to sell you some good stuff. Money. Wealth. Accumulation of nonsense. And we get sucked in. Come and accept Christ today. Accept the reality of life. There is nothing in this world. We are strangers passing through this place. We are strangers. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, all is vanity. All. Not some, but all is vanity. And he concluded, King Solomon concluded, that the only duty of man is to worship God. That's why we are here. That's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you don't, know, you, 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 you don't know what to do with yourself at times. That's why we worry so much. Because we have forgotten that we are only here to worship God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remove the junk. You and I, let us destroy the old self. And let us come new, build a new relationship through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is only through him that we will have a rich storage full of God's goods and goodness. And everything about God is new all the time. There is no junk in his ways. There is no junk in his house. His computer runs smooth all the time. There is no delay in his computer. Uh, there is no delay in his cell phone. Uh, the, the cell phone line up there is direct and nothing will hinder you. He got all power in his hand. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the alpha and omega. 
the beginning and the end. There is nothing too hard for my God. There is nothing too impossible before him. Everything that may seem impossible to us as human is nothing to God. There is nothing he cannot do. Just come to him and accept him. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, this very moment, this time, come and accept him. Believe in him. Believe that he came and died for you and for me. He came and he was prosecuted because of our sin, because of what we have done wrong. It was put upon him. He was nailed on the cross. And then he died. Yes, he did die. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. The grave was rejoicing for their new arrival. <laughs> but on Sunday morning, God raised him up from the dead. And he told us, he made it known that all power is in his hand. Come and accept Christ in your life today. Yes, I know you've done wrong. I have done wrong too. The Bible tells us that none is perfect. No one is perfect. All have sinned. All have done wrong. So come as you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you have done. My brother spoke last Wednesday. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever, everybody, God love everybody. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you have done. He loves you. People may not like you. People may not love you. But God loves you. What is the purpose of the cross? The cross that Jesus died on. Why, why did God allow Jesus Christ to go to the cross? He went to the cross for your salvation and my salvation to save us. He went to the cross so that God made a statement to the devil to let the devil know I am in charge. The cross defeated the devil once and for all. Well, what is the purpose of the cross? At the cross of Jesus Christ, God made a profound statement. God made a statement on that cross. On that cross, God told everybody, God told the world that I love you. I love you. I love you. Because I love you, I give myself. I died for you. On, the, on that cross, the profound statement God made on that cross, the purpose of the cross, is that God made a statement that I love you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you have been, I love you. You know, people may dislike you for what they think about you. People may dislike me for what, for what they have heard about me. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, people may not like me or like you for what they have heard. But I come to tell you, God loves you with all the evidence. Did you hear me? God loved you with all the evidence. People may not like me for what they have heard, but God loved me with all the evidence. God loved you. Come to him today. Accept Jesus Christ into your life. God is watching you. He sees where you are. He sees everything. This is your time. Accept Christ into your life. And he will give you a new life. Put a smile on your face. Make you strong in your work. Make you strong in everything. 
give you that peace which the world cannot give. The Bible says, God said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. God got a plan for you. But come home. Come home today. Come and accept him. We don't know tomorrow, but we know who hosts tomorrow. We know who made everything. Accept Christ in your life today. And pray this prayer with me. My Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, I surrender to you. I've done so much wrong, but I know that Jesus came and died for me to wipe my sins away. I accept Christ into my life right now. Help me to do right. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, here at East Mount Zion, we'll be happy. We'll be really happy to have you. You can come with us. No matter where you have been, call East Mount Zion. Our pastor, Reverend Dr. Cash, will be happy to talk with you. We will be happy to talk with you and have you as a member of East Mount Zion. Stop worrying about what is going on in the world because the Bible tells us that in this world we will have trouble. But be of good cheer, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. I thank you for listening and I pray that you will join us in due time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be rest and abide with each and every one of you until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.